Welcome, welcome, welcome. You got my new shirt. It's so annoying. I wish they made it for necks that weren't Japanese. It's like a Pikmin shirt. Isn't that cool? Isn't this so cute? Sorry, they steal the little button. There's no button here. But, that, but secretly, chat, there is... <laughs> You look like you're Zen. I do look like I've gone on a Zen retreat. Yeah, so actually in Bangladesh, there's a master in the in the hills, and I smoked something. And I, I think I just saw things. Actually, I think it's a. I, I actually don't, don't like that, that it's always lentil soup, soup at the Google cafeteria. cafeteria. I look evil. Okay, well, whitewashed IP man. What does that mean? A whitewashed IP man. Oh. <laughs> Back up. Bring me your strongest fighters. Yeah, but we went to Europe. I said I would do a stream and we just chilled and talked about it. Dude, I, I was so tired before the stream and I start streaming and I have energy. It's great. We, we had like a fun little crazy month, I guess, because we went to PogChamps, which completely ruined my month. I feel like I just didn't stream at all before Europe, but I definitely did. Yeah, because PogChamps took up so much. Look how much PogChamps took up. And then we did the marathon. Dude, my feet, okay, the blisters are gone, but I'm pretty sure that like the remnants of them are still there. Let me double check. <laughs> It's like gone completely. It's just like normal. Sleep. Stop sniffing the screen, you bastards. We went, to, we went to Europe, right? I think it's the 28th of August. And boy, do I not get a single wink of sleep. 14 hour flight. I forgot. You know, I should do paint to illustrate things. Boom. Japan. Flags are not my strong suit. To the UK. No, we went to Ireland first, but we landed in the UK first. So this is where it gets so complicated, all right? If you ever travel, You'll know a big brain strat, all right? Art is my passion, by the way, chat. Doing a bunch of one-way flights ends up being, like, more expensive and, and also confusing. And if you just book a return flight, a lot of the times, for some reason, they're a little bit cheaper. I don't know why. So I had the big brain idea. I was like, okay, well, I'll just, instead of getting a flight one way to Ireland, I'll fly to London and I'll return from London. So I'm on this flight. Okay, I'm gonna draw me. This is, draw me. This is me on the flight because I got zero sleep. The flight took off at, like, eight. And I land in the UK and it's, like, three... PM, I think. Draw monkey. Okay. Well, Sag monkey arrives. And so I'm like, okay, I just have to wait three hours until my flight to Ireland, Des. But of course it's not that easy. So the moment I fly, this is me, by the way, I land in London. I, okay. First of all, chat, I got to tell you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a schmuck. I pay for plane Wi-Fi. I know. I know. I know. Don't hate me. So while I'm on this flight from Japan to, to England, three hours before I land, I get the BBC <laughs> notification on my phone. All flights have been cancelled out of London. Bear in mind, my dumbass is three hours away from landing in London. And I'm like, what? I'm gonna land there in three hours, am I not? So I gave myself two hours to transfer. Uh, upon, upon landing, three hours before, I saw that my flight was still happening. Two hours before my flight landed, all the flights got canceled. So my flight got canceled as well. And I didn't know what to do. So I, I get, I land at Heathrow with two hours until my flight was supposed to be, but it's already canceled. So it's gone. It's done. But the one, the one good thing, even though we were arriving on the 28th, Dublin show, first September. So I had, I had this time to figure out how to get to Dublin. The, when I was checking before I landed uh, on the plane, there was no flights available to Dublin. Why were the flights canceled? So something went wrong with air traffic control in the UK uh, and just everything broke and nobody knew why. When I landed in that three hour window between my plane landing, me looking like this and me needing to get my other flight, it had been fixed. But all the flights had already been canceled for like a, the next few hours. And in the whole time I'm getting my bags and I found out it's canceled, but now it's fixed. I'm like, okay, maybe I can get a flight today. Couldn't get a flight today. And I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't book a flight tomorrow because I, I'm sure they'll put me on the flight tomorrow anyway. So I waited. But as I was waiting, I kept seeing all those flights sell out too. And I was like, fuck. Wait, that means, okay, then no flights on the 28th. So no flights on the 29th now either. This means I'd arrive uh, on the 30th, uh, which was cutting it a little close, but but still fine. Anyway, I, I get in Heathrow, greatest airport in the world. <laughs> God bless the queen, am I right, guys? So good. Uh, she's dead now, by the way, because you didn't know. Spoilers, sorry about that. I, I go out of departures, go, uh, sorry, arrivals, go right back up to departures, go into the terminal. It's a f mess, bro. A everyone is freaking out in this terminal. It is, I, and I, bear in mind, I have not, I've been awake for like 20, something odd goddamn hours i'm f anyway so I, I have my bag and I, I go to the first staff member i i see and i'm like hey uh where do i gotta line up she's like i don't know i was like what he's like i don't know what do you mean just she said i don't know like five times to me i was like do you know anyone who would know she's like well i think everyone's lining up in that line and i said I, I, I said i'm gonna be i'm not being funny but that looks like a three-hour line i was like is there anyone else i can ask she like, points me at this other guy and i go to this other guy and i'm like hey is this the right desk he's like uh i think so 
So I sit in this line and it's like a line of maybe like 50 people. But because it, it, it's, it takes like 10 minutes for them to get through every single person and there's only three desks, you can do the math. This is, this is taking a lot longer than I wanted it to. I'm just sitting there and I'm looking at the flights for the day after tomorrow and they're all just gone. So now I'm praying that this, this airport staff member can help me out here. So I, I waited three hours standing in this line, three hours with the anxiety of not even knowing if I was in the right line. Can you imagine that? You're in a line, you can't pee or poop because you don't have a friend to set, like sit in the line with you. So I finally get to this desk. I get to the person. I don't blame them because they have to deal with I, what I can only imagine are the most stressed customers on earth. This, I got one word out of this staff member. I'm like, all right, yeah, this is my flight. She's like, okay, typing, ominous typing. Have you ever been in this situation that sucks? Ominous typing for five minutes. Not, not a word. And they goes, okay, we can put you on a flight today. And I was like, oh, let's go, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. She goes, okay, here's your ticket. I'm like, let's go get the ticket. I'm like, what? Like, what is this? It's like, yeah, it's the only flight we could get. I'm like, well, this is not the airline I, I bought a ticket with. I'm like, this is an Aer Lingus flight. <laughs> I'm like, and I have checked luggage chat. I have checked luggage. I was like, <laughs> no, no, ain't no way, ain't no way. I can't go through this again. Don't make me get on that plane. I, I have the terrible, the gut-wrenching feeling of walking to the baggage check and I'm like, Aer Lingus, please, Take care of my bag. But I was happy at least this time because I had, I had a tracker in my bag. I learned I have trackers in everything now. I have four hours until my flight. And bear in mind, I've already been waiting three hours, chat. And I've I've been awake for like 20. I was dying. Four more hours in this goddamn airport. And I smell like sh feel like sh I just feel great. I just like I, awful, not great. So I just went to the airport lounge and chilled out for like four hours. And and yeah, I, I finally, after what should have been a two hour layover, turned into, I guess, a seven hour layover. But I finally made it into Dublin at 11 p.m. or something like that. But I arrive at the hotel and everyone's just chilling there in the lobby. Gone, Sydney, our tour staff. And I was like, guys, I'm gonna be real. <laughs> I, f I need a drink. <laughs> and they were all like, we we're about to go to bed. John looked at me. Like, Connor, I went on a whiskey tasting experience today and I've done nothing but drink since 1 p.m. But I'll do it. So like 10 of us. That's me on the biggest one, by the way. I'm six foot. Everyone else is two foot. I got a Guinness. It was very nice. Chill times. Yeah, that was the end of the first day. But it was a now. What a day. What a stressful day. And then the next two days, I spent it basically with my parents. <laughs> Sad, droopy whales. This is basically Wales. So my parents, they couldn't fly. So they just took the train all the way to here and then took the boat over, which they said was pretty pleasant. They arrived and then we hung out all the next day and then hung out with Super Hyper 12th John uh, in the evening. And it was super fun. John's such a sweet guy. God, it's so nice. Bless his heart. And then the next day I hung out with my family and my two brothers flew in as well. Basically all of my family, except for like one of my brothers came to, to Dublin. So we all hung out. It was super chill. We just went to the Guinness experience, which I've never done before. I've been to Dublin a bunch. I've been to Ireland a bunch. I've never done the Guinness experience. And I was shocked because when you go into the Guinness experience in Ireland, uh, what you'll realize is that there is no higher concentration of white Americans on earth. You could go to a Daytona 500 uh, and you will not fi find more white Americans. I swear to God, I, I, you had an anxiety attack in that laughing face. <laughs> what? What did you have anxiety over? Was it, you're like, am I in America? What the f We went back to the hotel to just go and hang out. I, I'm mixing the days, actually. No, there's only one day off. Wait, this is all in one day. No, I'm mixing the days up. The point is that we had the show in Dublin. It was so much fun. There's a moment in the show where we talked about uh, hentai categories we secretly liked. And normally I would always choose MELF. <laughs> because my parents were in the audience, I was like, vanilla. And it was, it was very impressive seeing how many drinks the Irish people were having. So I know that in other countries people drink a lot, but what I was impressed specifically in the Irish show is that people would preload drinks to a magnitude I'd never seen before. In the UK, I'll, may, I'll never see someone bring more than two drinks for themselves, you know, because they don't want to move during the show. They'll get a drink for now and they'll get a drink for like the middle of the show. In the Dublin show, I saw people bringing four packs with them. Like, you know where you bring in coffee and they go in those little cardboard things? They were bringing four drinks and I was like, Oh, is that for you and your friend? He's like, no, 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 it's for me. Sits down, puts it on the stage because he was front row. It just like perches it there. I was like, all right. <laughs> uh, then uh, anyway, went to Denmark the next day. We arrive in Denmark and dude, I know I know Denmark is an extremely wealthy country, but holy sh**, just go to Denmark for the airport. Insane quality airport, dude. We go to the baggage claim and I've never seen an airport do this before, but there's food all over the uh, baggage area. Nowhere else has food near the baggage. Genius though. There's a hot dog stand and it smelled so good and we walked past it that we all went 
to this hot dog stand and it was insane. Danish hot dogs built different. Yeah, and then we just chilled out in the hotel, went to a Thai restaurant with Gone. After that, uh, Mudon, you have to, if this makes it into a YouTube video, you have to make so many graphics. I'm so sorry. After that, we did the IRL live stream in Denmark. It was the only day off we had all tour. And so I was like, okay, I have to do a live stream. And I was feeling good, dude, because Denmark was just so nice and chill. And I went to this amazing coffee shop before I went in. Let me show you guys if you ever go here. 4.9 stars with 500 reviews. Actually insane. Dude, look at this place. Look at that croissant. Oh. And this coffee shop had this really cool thing where I guess their reoccurring customers had their own cup. Dude, and it was so chill. I was sitting outside having a coffee. Bro, it was vibes off the chart. So yeah, we went out, went to Rotterdam and then, and the Rotterdam show was really fun. It was crazy. Oh, someone in Denmark as well. I forgot to say this. One of the VIPs, shout out to whoever you are. They gave me this, the Cenophilia thing to like put on. I needed that, so thank you. Anyway, yeah, we did the show in Rotterdam, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and then the next day we went to Amsterdam and people from Amsterdam were just crazy. They were just losing it. <laughs> we took the picture with Rain as well. <laughs> the best friends forever. Poor Rain, poor Rain. Oh, come off it. Poor, that's the most, that's the most views Rain's Twitter account has got all year. Come off it, chat. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's always fun. Obviously, obviously I've known Rain for ages. I get to bully Rain. You guys don't get to. It's my job, guys. Let me handle it, all right? So then went to Amsterdam and obviously, oh, I got this thing at Amsterdam. I got this little boy. Look at him. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I wish I could color it, but I, I feel like I'd butcher it. After the Amsterdam show, uh, we flew to Sweden, which is my first time ever in Sweden. All I know is that Ikea is from Sweden and Swedish meatballs. I think Felix DM me the exact on the flight over. He was like, when are you in Sweden, by the way? And I was like, yeah, well, I'm actually on my way right now. And I asked him, I was like, do you have any food recommendations or anything I should go eat? And he was like, okay, well, I'm not from Stockholm, but there is one restaurant I like to go to when I'm in Stockholm and he sends me this restaurant and I was like, oh, this is super close to the venue. This is great. Uh, so we finally pick up the tour bus then, drive that to the venue. We get there around like 12 in the afternoon, sends me this restaurant. I go to it. Every single person in this restaurant is old. And I was like, okay, this is going to slap. I can tell. All the dishes were like 30 bucks. So I was like, okay, it's got to be good. And holy shit. First of all, everyone in Sweden, why is everyone in Sweden so like handsome? It's f***ed up. It's not fair. Even people who are like 60. So I go to Sweden and I get this. Oh my, look at this. Look at this. I have had Swedish meatballs before. Something like this is, this is just built diff. This is just another level. This was insane. I could live off this. And the sauce was godlike. I would go bankrupt for this. But the Swedish crowd was also crazy. We were performed in like, uh, I think it was the circus, which <laughs> was very fitting. This is the circus. It looked like a circus inside. Look at that, it's crazy. Uh, that was such a crazy show. And then immediately after that, the bus drove all the way to Oslo, Norway, where I went and had this meal. So apparently in Norway, beets are like a common thing. Uh, beetroot, sorry, beetroot, sorry. What am I saying? Beetroots with like an egg yolk, some onions, grilled some sauce and dude this thing was insane i have no idea how to describe how this tasted but holy shit, this thing tasted amazing and then it came with some other like cauliflower that was cooked like a chicken wing some flatbread uh, and some veal which looked like this it was very it was nice it was veal uh but honestly the the other thing was much nicer the beetroot thing uh, so norway was chill everyone was very nice in norway as well and someone gave us the illustrious cheese that Norway is famous for, which is the brown cheese. And I posted a picture of me stabbing it. But we had this Norwegian cheese uh, and it was, yeah, it was good. Uh, and gone in the background and looked like, what the f***? <laughs> it was a very interesting taste. It didn't taste like how I thought it was going to taste. And then after that, we took the drive from Oslo to Germany. On the way to Germany, uh, I'm just looking at my phone and I open the BBC app, which I never do. There's a notification saying St. David's Hall, which is the venue that we were going to play at in Wales, has just been shut down. I was like, what? And so I look into it and it's like, oh, Cardiff. Oh, that's our venue. So I talked to our tour staff. I'm like, hey, I think this just dropped. And it said eight minutes ago. Um, Our venue in Wales has closed. So so they're all freaking out trying to do this next venue and trying to figure out what the f*** we're going to do. But anyway, we had the Germany show to do, so we couldn't worry about that. We arrive in Germany. I, I tell everyone, I'm like, hey, listen, guys, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to a beer garden right now. You are all welcome to join. I am going regardless. We get a, a giant stein of beer and I get a currywurst, which looks like this. I'm not going to lie. I've had currywurst before. This was the middest currywurst I've ever had. It was not that good. It was probably the worst meal I had in the entire of the Europe tour. So that was kind of sad. But at least there was this funny MILF fan. But that was fun. That was fun. And then we had the Germany show. The German show was wild. Germans were just 
crazy. Then after that, everyone else drove to London, but I wanted to get there earlier to go and meet with some people. So I flew from Germany the next morning, which was a big brain idea in the end because the bus got stuck in customs for like a few hours. They didn't even get into the UK until like 8 p.m. or something. So I met up with Sean and Gabby, I had dinner with them, caught up with them for that Sean went to do his, uh, or Jack Septicai went on to go and do the Sidemen charity match. So it was a lot of fun. There are a few times I've met with a YouTuber or a personality online and just connected with them so well. But Sean and Gab, I just, I just really feel like I, I really respect and have such a good rapport with. And they're just so fucking sweet. They're so sweet. And then the next day we had the show at the Apollo, which is like a famous venue in the UK. I think there's one in America as well. Uh, it was very nice uh, getting to do a show in London in front of all of my friends. Uh, and it was just a great time. We had a day in London where I just hung out with friends. It was really nice. And then the next day we went to Wales, which was just great. I, dude, it was so fun going to Wales. The moment we arrived, everyone on the tour bus was like, Connor, what the fuck does that say? I told people, I was like, yeah, there's going to be Welsh everywhere. All the signs are in Welsh and English. When we arrived, the first thing we could see <laughs> was this sign. They were like, what the fuck is that? So there's humps in the road and they, they're all translated. And they just kept asking me to explain what all the translated things were. Our word for for humps is tumpathai. And I was like, yeah, it's just tumpathai, isn't it? This, what, you just never fucking use this word in Welsh, by the way. But I know this word. And then I was eating in Greg's in, in Cardiff and a fan stopped me outside of Greg's or all of us and wanted the picture. And I was just holding the Greg's whilst we did, did this picture. But we did, they didn't actually find a venue for us to play at in Cardiff, which is like the Students' Union, which was super uh, kind of a, a bizarre venue because it was basically just a room that we just squished 700 people into. Uh, it was a lot of fun doing a show in Wales. One of my childhood friends got to come, which I was super stoked about because I haven't seen him in so long. Uh, and then another friend from my school who now works for the Wales but does a bunch of stuff for the Welsh networks. And I did a bunch of Welsh interviews and I'm hoping they'll be released at some point so I can show you guys. I did a bunch of video interviews in Welsh, which was f hard because my Welsh is, is not as good as it used to be. So I was struggling. Uh, and then we drove back to London, got there at like 4 a.m. And then I was like dead grabbing my stuff from the bus. Like, oh, went to the hotel, passed the f out and then just chilled out in London for a while. After that, I drove up to Wales to see my parents for a little bit, hung out with them. It was super nice. But dude, I lost my phone in the taxi. Oh, it was so bad. We went out for dinner and I took my phone with me and I, I was like, I was certain that I brought my phone with me. I got to the restaurant and I couldn't find my phone. I was like, what? I must've just left it at home. But the whole meeting like it's all I could think about and it was I was trying to enjoy the meal with my parents and I was like what the fuck problem was is that my phone didn't have internet because I didn't have a British sim so I couldn't track where it was so I, I called up the taxi company I was like hey can you send that dude back I'm certain that it's in the taxi I will pay whatever it costs just bring this dude back and they were like but the guy says it's not in the taxi I'm like it's in the taxi I know it's in the taxi so the dude actually drove back which I was like okay I walk rock up to the car I just see it and in between the seat and the seat belt there's like my phone is wedged perfectly perfectly in it where you could easily miss it. And I get it and I'm like, oh, thank God. But I felt so bad because I, I, I couldn't focus at dinner and, and talk with my parents as much, which I, I was obviously talking with them, but the whole time I was, my mind was preoccupied with this. And so then I went back to London, I got my friends for like a few days, went back to Japan and now I'm here. And then we're back on that grind. So that was all of the Europe's stuffs. It was a ton of fun, but hey, we're, we're back. You know, we're back boys, easy.